My name is Alice Bryan and I'm here from Design Insider and I just want to start by telling you a tiny little bit about what Design Insider is. Design Insider is an online magazine and we really strive to share the expertise of commercial interior designers and um, instigate conversations just like the one that we're going to have here today with the people that lead in the commercial sector. You can find us um, designinsiderlive.com. So what, obviously, once we've finished, pop over and take a look. I'd like to also thank Independent Hotel Show for giving us this platform here today to have this conversation. And I think that it's really obvious um, at, today, at the show yesterday and today that there's a huge amount of technology um, and there's a real buzz on those stands. So it's really pertinent that we're having this conversation around technology. I wanted to start by um, just mentioning sort of what hospitality is and it's the relationship between the host and their guest. And it's about the host welcoming their guest with goodwill and generosity. And if that's all it was about, it would be, it would be really easy. But we all know that it's about much, much more than that. It takes enormous expertise, research, and creativity to be able to deliver the experiences that we all want for our guests. So today, I am welcoming three fantastic speakers. Um, Nick Hickson is the founder of THDP, and we're just joined by a little bit of extra noise. Um, and Nick and his team are experts in creating hospitality for really well-known international brands, including Hilton and big projects that people will recognize. And they're very skilled in adapting to the fast-moving hospitality sector. I'm also thrilled to welcome Holly Hallam, who is the managing director at Design LSM. And I've had the absolute pleasure of working with Holly before for Design Insider, so it's fantastic to welcome you back. Um, Design LSM create immersive experiences for ever-expectant guests, and she's going to be able to share lots of examples with us today. I'm also thrilled to welcome Mustafa Afsharolu, who is the co-founder and interior designer at Tanner's Sons. Mustafa and his team, a team of six creatives that are London-based, designed one of the spaces here at the Independent Hotel Show, which is the business space, which is just downstairs in the front corner. So please do go and take a look at that. Today, as I mentioned, our conversation is going to be about technology. It's going to be to connect or to disconnect. Should we, how should we be designing hotels for the future in regards to technology? Will, um, and ultimately, what will the traveler want? Do they want to go to spaces and hotels where they can fully connect, they can see the technology, and it's there for them to benefit from? Or do they want to go and have experiences where they can just set everything aside, disconnect, and, um, and, and leave that sort of technology behind? So we're going to start our conversation with Nick. Nick, perhaps you could um, begin by, saying, by telling us how technology enables hospitality to be delivered. It's a very, very broad question. It is. Um, and taking it from our point of view, which is dealing with hospitality uh, hotels, so dealing with people like Hilton, Marriott, Hyatt, Accor, IHG. Um, uh, what, has, what has surprised me over the few years that we've been working with hotel groups is, I guess in one way, is the, so, the very slow implementation of technology. I mean, some of it's very rapid in terms of software, in terms of management systems, in terms of taking bookings, online systems, etc. But in relation to kind of the technology appearing front, in front of the guest, that's been very slow on the uptake because it just costs an enormous amount of money to implement it. So things like the booking systems are rapidly arriving and have developed within hotels. Uh, but things like you know, straight to room key systems and keyless systems are very slow in terms of uptake, I think. You know, and and it's been, that's been quite a surprise for me. You know, I walk around many of the stands here and they, I see loads and loads of technology, which is amazing. But then I'm struck actually by 
the kind of gulf between what you see in hotels. I mean, and that's, let's, mm-hmm. let's be frank about it. I mean, I, I actually thought, well, it's going to be a little bit disappointing because I'm kicking this off and it's, I'm talking about hotels most specifically, but actually when I look at the, some of the hotel projects I've worked in, how slow it's been in, take, in, in being implemented into the yeah. hotel uh, in many ways. But saying that, I mean, obviously, you know, I think the approach that hotels have, I mean, they, they are keenly focused on that because obviously there's a, there's a, there's a ROI, there's a return of investment in implementing that technology within to, into their hotels. And it starts obviously with, with, with your own phone. Mm-hmm. But nowadays you can go online, you can book a hotel online, you can go into the booking system of uh, Hilton Honours or, or Bonvoy for Marriott, etc. IHG systems, and literally book your, your, your hotel experience starting from that. And obviously, from that system, then you can then you can before you even arrive into the hotel, they can assign a room to you. You know, you're notified before you even arrive uh, of your room, your room number, etc. And 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 that starting point is 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 a is a gateway to almost the the whole experience that the guest has within the hotel. So not only from a keyless check-in to straight to room systems, but uh, but. Uh, lighting room management systems within the hotel. All of these things exist now that you can actually implement with your own phone, managing your, your TV mm-hmm. from your phone, yeah. literally managing your Netflix, et cetera, et cetera, with, from your phone. So in a way, you think to yourself, why, why isn't it being implemented far quicker? Because mm-hmm. actually, it all starts from, you know, there's, there's a low cost because everyone's bringing their own phone with them, essentially. Yeah. But, but the problem, I think, is that the, uh, the ongoing costs of, of the management, you know, the, the actual management room systems, mm-hmm. you know, per key, uh, per fit out is so high. Yeah. And I guess the other way you would think about it is many of the hotel projects that we work on in, in Europe in particular are refurbishments. So yeah. they're not actually stripping out all of the electrics in the room. They are actually implementing a, a new soft refurbishment most often than yeah. not. So they don't, actually take, they don't actually take up the systems because it would mean literally ripping out the entire management system of the room, yeah. taking, changing all the lighting, applying motorized blinds to the windows, implementing a new TV, et cetera. And therefore, you th- and therefore it's, a, it's a real shame to me because I think what, and coming back to your original yeah. form of the question, which was what is hospitality? Mm-hmm. I think most hotels understand that Fundamentally, they want the whole experience to be utterly seamless. Yeah. And no one wants to implement you know, a, a freestanding iPad or, or, or your own phone system into a room where the client comes in and immediately just understand and have a clue what it's all about, yeah. rather than them using their own phone where they're very comfortable touching and using, and you know, mm-hmm. obviously with COVID, et cetera, and, um, and picking that up and actually having a system there in front of them, which is very familiar. I mean, I think we've all become very familiar with go- going to a hotel or going to a restaurant, scanning the barcode off the, off the table, dropping onto the system that, that, that's there, implemented within the restaurant, and ordering yeah. it all online. So it's the next logical step is, re- next logical step is really to take that and implement that within the, the guest experience. Okay. And I think in that way, I can see you know, that the hotels driving their revenue through the uh, room service op- operations, for yeah. example, because people will be more tempted to uh, order things for the room, implementing new services within the TV systems, mm-hmm. booking movies, et cetera, within the room, booking, booking meeting rooms, booking boardroom tables, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. and, and actually having a massive return of investment on it. So as I said, as a, from an interior designer's point of view, it's, it's a shame in a way that, that, that hotels happen, or owners of hotels, because it's often the owners who are paying yeah. for all of this in any case, haven't implemented it, haven't taken it up, because I, I think there is a real benefit to the, not just to the, to the hotels in terms of revenue, but also to the guests in terms of the overall experience that they're going to have, and that that's just going to be far tailored to, to what they need today. You know, that yeah. you can actually go onto the system before you arrive with your wife and actually book a cham- bottle of champagne as a, an in-room add-in or change yeah. your pillow type or something like that mm-hmm. seamlessly and easily. And yeah. I think th- those are the key benefits I see as a, as a kind of guest experience from, from that point of view. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Holly, is that the same um, from your experience, regardless of the, s- the size of the hotel, or does it differ if you're talking about a sort of smaller setting? I think you're exactly right. It's the infrastructure that, that is the prohibitor for putting technology into refurbishments. Obviously, if it's a new build, happy days and start, start from the ground up, uh, as you mean to go on. But it's, it's I think, the, the slow uptake and understanding actually what that benefit does give both to you as an operator or the guest, because you're exactly right. That level of personalization that technology 
can, can kind of provide is fantastic. If you think about the kind of the amount of loyalty or the amount of data that you can collect, you're then engaging with a guest on such a deeper level through technology and through the use of kind of invisible technology as well, especially if it's using, as you say, through your own phone, that people aren't kind of feeling as maybe prohibited about giving over their data or giving over their preferences because it's all stored on their own device anyway. So I think it is something that has been slow to uptake, but I think it is something that's kind of going to be the next big wave of, of kind of of revolution for, for kind of how people engage. Fantastic, thank you. Um, Holly, how does, the brand, how does a brand define a guest experience that they intend to deliver? Um, and what impact does that have on the integration, integration of technology within their setting? Again, very wide question. <laughs> um, I think it's really important for any brand to really establish sort of what their sense of purpose is, what's their strategical positioning in the marketplace. So in order to define kind of what your direction is, what your tone of voice is, what your DNA is, so that you then understand who are you as a brand and what you want to represent and what's your kind of mission and purpose. So really sort of for us as an agency, we always start with our clients on what is their strategical positioning, what's their brand DNA, because from that you can then kind of deliver on what that guest experience should be. So, if, you know, for example, if you're in an urban city centre hotel, it's going to be very different. You're probably looking at people that are wanting to stay less inside your hotel and using it more as a base, and therefore you need to think about maybe your front of house experience being larger and more prevalent than your room experience. Um, Z Hotels are a really great example of that. They've got very small rooms, but actually their front of house space is fantastic. It's really communal, it's really social. You know, for an extra little, I think it's eight pounds or something, you can have as much free alcohol and as much free food that they put out in their little ready-made kitchens for you as possible. And they have a great communal table that you can sit down and so you can meet other travelers, um, which is really great. So that's you know, that's, they've really delivered and thought about what the purpose of this, that guest stay is going to be, and it's all about getting out, socializing. Um, whereas if you look at something more rural, um, then it's all about kind of coming there to relax, a digital detox potentially, um, and having just that slower pace. And so therefore, the room sizes should be bigger, your materiality will be different, the color palette even might be a bit calmer and softer. And you know we're we're working with a, a hotel in the Cotswolds at the moment, and we're looking at their playbook, which is about how to deliver guest experience. So it's all about you know hi having electric bikes to hire, for example, with curated little backpacks that you can take your own picnic in and things like that. But that wouldn't work for a brand, city centre brand necessarily. Um, so it's really understanding your locality, understanding your brand, and making it then fit for the guest desire that you're trying to deliver. And I think the same is for technology. Again, it's not a one size fits all. So taking the city center example, it's probably about technology being an enabler and it being about being an efficiency and it about being personalizing that whole experience because it might be that you've got corporate guests that are returning on a frequent basis to one venue or another venue across the country. And exactly as you say, if, if you can have personalization that their temperature, their room type, their pillow, for example, can all be in that room before they've actually arrived, that's fantastic. And that guest will probably use you time and time again because you've just saved them a whole lot of kind of pain or, or kind of time. But if you're a, a kind of a rural property, yeah. I think people might want to come and use technology in a different way. It yeah. might need to be a bit more kind of seamless, a bit more secretive in terms of hidden, should I say, not secretive, um, in, in, in the way that it's being, or, or used as an added luxury. So, you know, it's not just about the operation management for technology or the personalization of the guest experience. It might be to do with kind of the wellness ability. So it could be sort of the infrared saunas that you put in a room, or it could yeah. be about light management to, to kind of look at light levels and light tones to increase kind of serotonin and all of that kind of stuff. So I think it's about looking at what's your brand, what is the guest experience you're really wanting yeah. to create, and how can technology be an enabler and not a prohibitor? Mm -hmm. And it certainly shouldn't mean that it's sort of getting rid of staff or team or anything like that. It's there to enable kind of key touch points that you yeah. want to deliver on. And we always recommend guests sort of sit down with a checklist 
uh, sorry, our clients sit down with a checklist and sort of say, what operationally do we need to deliver? And what, mm -hmm. from a guest experience touch points, do we need to deliver? And where can technology help us on that? Right. And then what are the things that we really want to actually do as a personal engagement? And, yeah. then, and then you can really look at how you can use technology as that enabler and how you can still create that kind of personalized guest experience. I think it's really interesting that that's how you and your, your team sort of address that with your client. Do you work with your team, Mustafa, in a similar way with your client? Absolutely. So we would be sort of like, yeah, we're a small team of six, but uh, we would always make sure that we sit all together yeah. it, on each project. Even the... Um, the little social business space we've designed downstairs, we, we got the entire team to sit down after we've taken the brief from the client, um, understood their requirements for the space and what it needed to achieve. And like you said, mm -hmm. not a lounge space that you can just uh, chill and work. It's more yeah. of a networking space. So after we understood those requirements, we, we came together as a team. Uh, some of the team members sit in Cyprus, some of us are in London, so it's a, it's a digital platform we do it in. And it's, it's sort of like really interesting to get all these different backgrounds from, from, from all of my team members and sort of like get their input in the, in the sort of like design along the way and um, think about how, how different visitors would be using the yeah. space and they would all bring their own um, sort of like um, mindset and thoughts around that. So it's sort of like really interesting to see that um, from, the, from the diverse um, team members we have who think about sort of like different experiences yeah. based on their sort of like uh, demographics, I guess. And does technology play, or discussing technology with, as part of the project, does that play a big role in that conversation? It does, and it really depends on the brief from the client. Um, we try to take it, um, we, we, we do these like workshop sessions with, with our clients, I'm sure you guys do too, where we, we, we go thoroughly through, through the requirements of the space, what the space needs to achieve on a um, sort of like tangible and obviously like in a digital way as well, and sort of like understanding those so that they can be incorporated in rather than just, you know, Three months later, we, we need a um, projector screen and um, get that sort of like retrofitted afterwards. Yeah. Trying to get those requirements in early on in the process, especially yeah. we do a lot of workplace design as well, and that's okay. huge, obviously, in, in tech. Yeah. So we always um, make sure that we design those in, mm -hmm. but with future flexibility as yeah. well, so that it doesn't then um, get taken out and the space has, has to be like recreated overall yeah. again. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge part. Um, and Nick, when you're discussing technology and that sort of um, putting forward the new technology that you talked about earlier, do you find that your clients are quite receptive to that? Do you have to sort of educate them quite a lot on how that might work or what the benefits of that might be? I don't just toss technology. I mean, if I start t just discussing technology with a client, they're just going to switch off in three seconds. I, I, okay. I mean, I just don't like the word at all. I think, I think we should be talking about solutions. I mean, okay. Because that's what technology delivers. It just delivers a solution to, to a problem. And, and the problem could be, how do we manage check-in? How do we deliver food to the room? Those are the solutions that hospitality companies are looking for. If we start talking about technology, that, that should be all the, all the, all the boring stuff. Yeah. What we should be talking about is really, what are the problems that guests face? What are the, what are the problems that the hospitality companies face in delivering what is, as you say, that home from home experience? Yeah. And, and I think, um, I think you know, technology should be invisible, and it partially is invisible. I mean, none of us know how an app works or, or our phone works. And you know, the, you know, 50, 100 years ago, we could go and fix our own car or go and fix yeah. our own washing machine. Nowadays, none of us have got a clue. Yeah. And none of us want to have a clue. I don't, I don't care how my car works as long as it works. <laughs> so yeah. that's my kind of, and I'm okay. sure everyone's relationship with technology is like that. Everyone's just like, oh, technology, I just hate the word. Solutions is what we do. So we talk about solutions. and. As I said, all-in-one hospitality technology is, to me is like, I don't want to know about technology. Yeah. So, but, but going back to what you were saying about this kind of home-from-home home experience, I think that invisibility and that use of AI within, within technology that exists yeah. now or, or solutions that we have now, that's the seamless part of it. I mean, you know, I, we, you know, all this information can be scraped from the app and you know before the guest arrives how warm they want the room. You know, when, when you're at home, your partner knows or you know what your, your partner likes in yeah. terms of the pillow top that they like or how, how warm they want the room. Yeah. And all those things are kind of like almost seamless. I mean, they're, they're almost things that you don't even know happen within your own home, but they happen. You, you, you turn up the temperature the way yeah. you want it. And if that's delivered seamlessly into your room, 
then you don't even realize it's yeah. happened to you, yeah. that, that all of those things have been delivered to you, that you have the right type of drink in your room, theoretically, depending on the quality of the hotel that you might have, or that you've got a level of comfort that you're expecting, or the check-in process is exactly what you want, or the level of interaction between you and the, the, uh, the hostess, for example, mm -hmm. is, is perfect. You know, that you want that interaction, or yeah. you don't want the interaction, or you want to be confronted, or you don't want to be confronted. I think all of those things can be baked into the AI within, within the technology that is right. carried around you, so that at the end, you know, the, the, your involvement with it is as much or as little as you want. I think that creates a much better engagement level. And, you know, yeah. it's that the more engaged you are with a brand, the more kind of a sensory experience and the more emotional connection you have with it and therefore it builds the loyalty and therefore you're walking away with a positive memory which means that you'll yeah. be more likely to return or recommend the brand so I think it's all of those plus points and as you rightly say it's it's quite often our clients will be like tech like cost no I'm concentrating <laughs> on getting open and my budget and on time yeah. Yeah. so I think it's about saying to them exactly at the right stage what what is the outcome you're wanting to achieve? What do you, you know, what's that experience? What's that operational efficiency? Where is it that you want to kind of, um, you know, kind of get to? And then understanding that sense of purpose allows you to then provide technology as a solution, yeah. rightly as you said, Nick, as a solution, rather than it's sort of going, here's our suitcase of technology. What are you going to take from it? It's more about kind of going, okay, what, what suits? How big, a, how big an estate do you have? Because, you know, if it's only one property, then it might not be suitable to invest in certain things, but it, will be, it might be that it's really back of house technology yeah. that's gonna be really suitable rather than front of house. Um, so I think it's, it's really understanding how it can kind of, say it again, be an enabler for creating commercial efficiencies, but also kind of guest engagement and loyalty. Sometimes I do think though that you can use technology to, to create those experiences as well, like as a bit of, a, bit of an add-on, for example, um, there's these coffee machines called Scanomat that are just taps um, and you use iPad to, to order your coffee and you can you know, modify the hell out of it. And it just becomes a bit of a, for, for customers, it becomes a bit of a um, talking point and they mention it to their friends, oh, do you know what, I've ordered my mocha through this, through my app and it's great, like come back to this lounge space so that we can you know, like use this and, and sort of like it, it just creates this sort of like cultural space around it. So you could use it as a bit of a, bit of a talking point and a bit of an experience as well. Um, so sometimes it would be helpful for that too. For me, it's, uh, I think, uh, when you think about lifestyle hotels and, and the kind of the, the, you know, this birth of lifestyle hotels over the last 10 years and everyone's building lifestyle you know, type, type of properties, for me, it's like, what's, what's, what's next? What's beyond lifestyle? Where do we go next with lifestyle? I mean, and why do people build lifestyle hotels? People build lifestyle hotels for the guests who love that type of lifestyle. It suits their personality, it's quirky, it's fun, it's creative, it's engaging. And all of those things fit together with how they feel as a person. And, it, and it, you go there and it, and it just envelops you and you can show off to all your friends that you're staying in this really cool place, whatever that might be, as you say, a, 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 an urban hotel, a resort hotel, or an experience hotel. But what's beyond that, and what's beyond that to me is the, is the personalization, the, the real personalization of that experience. That if, you, if, a, if a brand knows that you tend to book two or three experiences when you go away to a resort hotel and you go to the next one, they already know the kind of things you like to do. So would you like to go rock climbing or would you like to go and do that? That's where, that's where I see the AI, the whole technology coming in seamlessly. They all know what you like and it's just there. So the hotel manager or, or the, the, the experience manager, because that's what hotels need nowadays, you know, not just a business manager or a, a f and manager, they need an experience manager to kind of manage those experiences for guests because we don't travel for the same reasons that we used to three years ago. I mean, we haven't even mentioned what happened with COVID, et cetera. So, and, 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 but, but the reason we travel has changed completely, and most of us change. I mean, I travel a lot. I travel for business a lot. But hell, you know, do I really like, love it when I can actually zone out and actually and, and enjoy the overall experience of it? Fantastic. Yeah. Mustafa, you mentioned earlier that a lot of your um, work is focus in the workplace and I I wonder if there are lessons that we can take away from the work that you do in the workplace or um, concepts that would also lend themselves in the hospitality sector that um, revolve around creating different spaces for different uses and, and how technology enables those. 
So, Alice, if you asked me this question two years ago or three years ago, I would say not so much. But, you know, we had this tiny little thing called COVID that's changed a lot of things. You know, it's really starting to, well, it, it, it had to blur straight away your work life and your private life and your sort of like social life as well. And um, yeah, historically, I'd, most of my career, I spent designing offices for the likes of Google's, Microsoft's, Facebook, so a lot of tech companies, actually. And um, the, the, the sort of like the difference between, between that sector and the hospitality was huge, especially hotel design was huge. But obviously, over the past two years, we just see a lot of our clients' briefs in the hospitality sector, because we've been sort of like jumping into hospitality as well, that the space needs to work throughout the day, yeah. right? It can't just be uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner. It has to be a space, or mostly anyway, with our clients, has to be a space that is usable throughout the day. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you need to allow people to be able to work from there. That means easy connection, connectivity, plug and play. Um, but what does that also mean is that the lessons we can take from workplace, the biggest thing we say when we design workplaces is variety of choice. So giving people the choice of um, different types of settings so that they can do their job the most efficient way. So there'd be a, there'd be a collaboration lounge so you could bump into people or have informal conversations in front of others. So it allows people um, to sort of like bump into each other and sort of serendipitous encounters, there's one. There's quiet conversations where, or, or quiet work where you have to be high focus. You need to sort of like close away and be on your own and be able to record a podcast, uh, be able to, you know, um, go through your report and just get that out of the way so that you can go um, on your electric bike and cycle afterwards. And there's all these different types of work modes that we normally incorporate into the workspace with the types of spaces we design. Now in hospitality and hotel design, I don't really see this um, yet happening, and I think that's one of the biggest differences that um, uh, between them that we can bring into hospitality design. Okay. So bring those variety of settings, bring that easy connection, bring those little pods that you can hide away from others fully, so you can focus, do your work, and get out as soon as you can to, to enjoy the rest of your time away. Because now as well, with most people doing remote working, yeah, I mean, they'll be traveling during the week as well, right? And yeah, yeah. being able to um, work and sort of like holiday at the same time. So it's just being able to allow that. And with technology overlay, what that means is spaces that allow for that really quick um, sort of like plug and play and spaces that you can completely, you know, um, switch off everything and focus on what you're doing um, quite often writing a report or some, something that's very sort of like non techy So it's, again, the choice, the balance yeah. of these settings that we could really learn to incorporate into these environments. Yeah, I think you're, I mean, I hate using the COVID word, um, but <laughs> you're absolutely right. The, the boundaries have completely blurred post, yeah. post COVID in terms of, I mean, they, I think they already were starting to come a bit blurred, but they kind of were rapidly forced to be blurred so people who were once you know i come to an office i work i then go to a hotel for my leisure or my kind of business yeah. trip it's now not that anymore people are just you know traveling and working at the same time so yeah. that hotel has to be a leisure and a business and a and a fun you know and a social destination um so i think it hospitality spaces do have to work a lot harder and i think clients are becoming a lot more savvy about what those spaces can be not just from a guest experience but also from a commercial perspective yeah. you know i mean you look at it's a cliche to say but look at the hoxton i mean you know how many how many people are there actually are residents of that hotel probably very few in that lounge they are there just to work and that that's an you know the money that they're getting on the coffees and the drinks and the food mm. etc so i think it's clients being a bit more savvy about where that revenue generation is coming yeah. from and how to space plan for that revenue generation and then what what that also means um, but yeah exactly right that it's it's about careful space planning to make sure that there's flexibility nobody wants and i'm sure sort of when we've designed traditional hotels they've got ballrooms and conference rooms that are sat dead for kind of so many hours of the day yeah. um, you know and people are sort of saying actually this is pointless i've got a huge restaurant that serves 600 people for breakfast and that's yeah. all it does 
yeah. and it's in a key space of the hotel. You know, what, what we need now to make every space count. And as, as energy prices go up and as rents go up, you know, every square foot's actually got to be commercially viable. Yeah. So understanding how to flex the space and how to make it work better is really key. I think, I mean, I think when you, I mean, I, we do a lot of MICE hotels, you know, meeting conference events, et cetera. And uh, I mean, obviously they've had, you know, with COVID coming along, they all look at it and think, well, it's, we're going to be dead. I mean, we can't survive. How do we, how do we manage? I, I don't see that at all. I think, you know, when you think about learning and traveling and, and, and organizing a business meeting somewhere as an event for your, for your team, I mean, if you ask anyone to say, what did you do last Thursday at work? No one would have a clue what they did last Thursday at work. But if you said, oh, where, where, was, where was the last business trip you went on? Hopefully, they can actually remember it because something fun happened. So when you look at many, many organizations like, like Hilton, like Andats, et cetera, the meetings are revolving into something which is far more experiential. So meetings are not meetings anymore. Meetings are just, go, let's go and have fun somewhere, get to some team events. Let's make sure that they, we don't have boring meeting rooms or boring ballrooms, that they break, break out onto a garden, they break out into an event space, or there's an F and the element or a, or you can do some cooking outside you know you can have a, a real experience with all the people all your team around you that you're going to remember what you've gone there to do and isn't that the whole point of why you would pay you know to take you know your hundred career off to a meeting and and show them a powerpoint presentation of course not what they want to do is is to have that learning experience that group gathering that, that is so important for everyone and a really experiential experience which delivers on a memory and when you remember that, you'll remember why you've been there. So do you have some examples that you can share where that's been particularly successful? Course, yeah, and, I mean, in the Hilton Barcelona, which we did, they had the traditional corridor with meetings off the whole space. And, and it was really fundamentally just, just positioned very, very, very badly. So we said, look, this meeting room is actually compromised by this column. Let's actually push the wall back, make it very open, and actually break out onto that and, ha and introduce an F&B area in front of that. So that corridor suddenly became a social gathering area, yeah. so that, and that glass walled area could be pushed back and opened up so they could actually have an event in that, in, in that space. We put some games and fun and ping pong and all of those kind of things in there as well, you know, to typical work workspace solutions or modern workspace solutions that introduce this element of fun into that. And it took off immediately, and they've won, you know, Europe's best hotel several years in a row now. And it's just because we, we introduce some of the kind of the typical workplace tricks that, that, that people do, you know, with uh, WeWork, et cetera, where it's not just a place to work, it's a place to gather, inform, discuss, group, share ideas, and share an experience. And, and I think that's where the workplace is heading. No one wants to be sitting at a desk in a cubicle anymore. If people want to have that social engagement, I mean, that's why we will want to, that's why we will want to return to work. Yeah. Um, and that seems to be one of the kind of fundamental problems with you know, the workplace at the moment, just getting people to go back. And they'll go back because it's far more fun than sitting at home and paying for your own electricity bill to heat your own house during yeah. those hours. Yeah. Um, oh, come. IHG, I know they've turned quite a lot of their room stock into actually flexible, hot working yeah. Yeah. stock. Yeah. So they've taken kind of ground floor rooms or first floor rooms and actually just kind of looked at where they could knock through and create these kind of hot desk kind of collaborative work environments because then again it uses their front of house space so it kind of justifies some of their team kind of sitting there during the day that maybe aren't kind of being as productive as possible it kind of increases their F&B spend and it gets people into into the hotel yeah. um, and you know there's lots of kind of places where actually people are now that they're a bit more kind of nomadic in their in their work life that are wanting to come and kind of just you know collaborate in a space for a couple of days and then and then kind of can continue to work from home so even kind of large brands like I say like IHG are really starting to think about turning room stock into something else which is completely yeah. you know unheard of that they turn keys away I mean it's a slightly double-edged sword because so, so many lobbies have become that, that social gathering space. As you say, you, like, you mentioned the Hoxton, for example, where you know, it's, the key is to bring in all the third-party users that come in to use your space, buy the coffee. It doesn't work sometimes. I mean, I think even Hoxton, the Ace Hotel, have kind of worked out that actually they just get fill up with people just sitting there all day, plugging their laptop in, yeah. they bring their own flask. <laughs> this is the problem. I mean, it doesn't work. The, the, the spaces that have been designed today, they do not work because right. they don't take into consideration how people work. 
it's not about just putting a really large table and some coffee and be able to expect people to be able to focus there or get their stuff done or even socialize. I mean, we talk about chance encounters, but when you're actually trying to do some work and someone's talking at you, it actually yeah. starts becoming a bit annoying. So looking at these like different settings and different comfort levels, different heights, different sort of like creating a bit of like landscaping, not yeah. through planting, just through the, the different settings yeah. you're creating is, is sort of like super important and acoustics and privacy and or, or the other way around, the, the openness. So it's yeah. sort of like that's, that's where we need to be moving into. I would imagine, I would imagine the, the, that many hotels, and again, like some of the bigger operators who've got these huge, great lobbies or huge, great spaces they can't use, that they would sit, they would produce a product which is more membership-based, where you know, if you wanted to have that social gathering, that social workspace, and, and you could produce a, a co-working area, but you have a membership fee, you come in, you can use any of, any of their hotels, wherever you are in the world, and just go into a co-working area, which is designed for you. You could log into their system, whatever, their laptop. You don't have to travel with the laptop all the time, and, and that space is developed for you. Yeah. And it, as a small kind of monthly fee for it. I can see that happening quite easily because a lot of hotels that have been built uh, are too big, perhaps, and uh, you know have too large, a, too, as you say, too large a room stock maybe that they can fill currently. Um, but that probably will change. But but some of the social areas they have are just just too large. Yeah. They can't fit all the meetings up. So where could they sit that interim product, as such? Yeah. Yeah. So I think one of the things that um, we're looking at within our conversation today is to really look, look to the future. And I'm really interested to know what technological advancements are just sat there on the horizon that will impact the hospitality sector and that uh, tech will also be part of. Yeah. Good question. It's <laughs> to all. I think, I think a question. There's the obvious, um, there's the metaverse the, you know, there's, the, that's out there and, and kind of how that's going to benefit and how people are going to commercialise it. I was reading a stat the other day that it's by 2030, 5 billion, which is 58% of the world's population will be a member of a metaverse. It's like, you know, that's incredible. Um, so, you know, we've got to, we're going to see so quite quickly uptake in, in that. But I do yeah. think, as, as you rightly said, Nick, that we might see some of that, the slowest people to update that might be, might be hotels um, until they understand kind of how they can commercialize that other than right. just guest communication or, or marketing. Um, but so I think where we might see some future tech or, um, or solutions coming out is through sort of trends like wellness. Right. So I really think that you're going to start to see some of that personalization and some of that um, solutions coming through for things like I've said about, you know, kind of infrared saunas or kind of lighting systems that really look into kind of allowing certain tones according to your mood setting. Um, and things like that, that really, you know, DNA profiling with the nutrition and the wellness packages that they offer. And I think we'll start to see some of those really exploding uh, because wellness and kind of mental and physical wellness is such a big kind of it's not even a trend it's just such a big kind of important issue within the hospitality and it's going to be one of the key reasons especially with kind of you know economic pressure people are going to travel but they're going to want it to benefit them they're going to want to have an experience and they're going to want it to be sort of something that creates kind of a sense of wellness within them to to justify if it's for a leisure purpose, to justify that kind of spend. Yeah. So I do think, aside from some of the obvious ones, um, that kind of technology and wellness will be one of the big things that we do see grow really rapidly. Mm -hmm. and I think the application of technology within the physical space would be, a, would be I mean, it's, it sounds a bit obvious and basic, but it's still not there. Obviously, a lot of, a lot of hotels you see these days are just very, um, you know, like very standard in that sense. So incorporating that in, so potentially smart room dividers that, that allow you to open up those uh, ballrooms or close them down so that you can use three rooms at the same time simultaneously with no noise issues like we were having earlier. Yeah. Um, but also smart furniture, so your bed turns into, you know, like a, a lounge space later on and okay. sort of like this constant change of space, especially, yeah, real estate is getting more expensive by the minute and being able to utilize that little space more efficiently through through tech integration is, is important. So not just thinking about tech as a touch screen to order your yeah. latte, but also 
how physically furniture can change into something else through that incorporation would be, you know, like yeah. I, th I think important. So like, yeah, it, it sounds really, really sort of like um, basic again, but the, the room dividers and things like that that would allow you to automatically switch the room layouts would be, you know, like a, it's a good start to yeah. to really make space more usable. Even projection. You know, I think that's even projection is simple tech like that because the hospitality and hotel industry has been quite slow to uptake. Even things like projection, which will actually change a room environment. So yeah. you're physically in the same room, but it will change the room environment for you. Um, is going to, I think, we're going to see kind of an uptake in, in more immersive solutions to provide yeah. flexibility in space. Yeah. I think, as I said, you know, it's one of those things that, we can all see this wonderful future ahead of us. And, you know, maybe back in the 50s, everyone thought by, we would have flying cars by now. And I think we're really bad predictors of the future. So yeah. that's why sometimes I kind of stand back from this. What's going to be happening in 10 years' time? Because none of us have got none idea who could have predicted COVID, for example. And it's yeah. funny things like COVID and, and those disasters that happen in the world, unfortunately, which probably are the biggest influences on, on changes, economic solution, finding economic solutions. Yeah. But I think, touch, touching upon what you're saying about technology enabling other things that happen in hotels, things like digital printing, you know, producing, producing surfaces and ceramics which are, which are uh, antibacterial. I mean, taking the kind of the question slightly to kind of aside the side, I think technology is evolving across the board that all the things that happen within hospitality to make the experience kinder and gentler, more friendly, more, more sustainable, all of those, all technology appears in all of those things. And it's not just a single enveloping thing that happens in front of the guests in terms of an iPad or a touch screen or ordering. It's across all of the surfaces, you know, producing carpeting and producing all the materials that go into a hotel. All of those industries are fighting so hard to produce the best, highest quality, most sustainable product um, baked in, you know, from the, from the inception of the product itself. So as a designer, it's always... It's always a tricky one to kind of answer what is going to be the future. I think the future will be very much what we've had in the past. You know, I mean, we'll still be living in, you know, in, in uh, the same houses we will be living in now in 100 years' time. But, there, but this inversion of or this uh, uptake of, of, of software, which is so much easier to implement, will be, will be the thing that's going to change and revolutionize our states and hotels. And it will be hopefully seamless, invisible and, uh, and adaptable. And intuitive, I think. And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, just before we finish, we have just got four or five minutes. If anybody um, has any questions, I hold. Just hold on one second. We've got a microphone for you. Hi. Uh, Hi. Very interesting talk. Thank you. If you think about the conversations you have with your clients and the barriers that they bring forward, if you have to pick one barrier. What is that? And what is the solution from your experience? You say one value. One barrier. 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 Yeah. Econo Economics. Costs. Cost. <laughs> this is the biggest problem we face generally on projects at the moment. Prices are going through the roof. Ordering any, you know, fitting out a room at the moment has more or less gone up by 30, 40%. I mean, we're, wow. doing, we're doing several hotels at the moment. Just knowing what the costs are going to be tomorrow, the next day, the day after is impossible to gauge, you know, the supply chain. So the cost is, is, the, is the toughest face, the toughest question that we face at the moment in terms of fitting things out. And your solution to that? I mean, you've been in the industry for a while. You've seen um, that before, perhaps. I, I, I was, I was talking to a whole group of suppliers uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, and I said, uh, specify less, design more, use less, use your brain, maybe we can refurbish, maybe we can just recover, maybe we can, and it's a kind of like, well, it's a kind of hokey solution where you think, oh, that's just not delivering the really on the guest experience. But I think that's probably the most sustainable solution yeah. is to reuse what you've already got, yeah. to, to readapt it, to, to change it, to modify it, and just to kind of push it on to another five or six years experience before we kind of got past this horrible situation that we're in now. And I think actually, you know, very, very often you can get some amazing results and it's utterly sustainable because you're using so much less product. Yeah. But I think also with what you were saying there, actually, it's it actually can deliver on the guest experience because actually it's then the energy is put into the team and the kind of the 
personal guest experience, which actually we can all talk about how wonderful our designs are and how kind of they add to the atmosphere. But actually, if, if it's not delivered through a personal touch, then it, it kind of falls short yeah. and you're just in a museum. So I think exactly that looking at, because I completely agree, you know, we, we were speaking to one of our furniture suppliers and they said, literally, if you do not place this order in the next 48 hours, we cannot guarantee this price anymore. You know, prices used to be guaranteed for furniture for like a month when yeah, you yeah. kind of specified and now it's, and yeah, yeah, and now it's 48 hours. So, you know, it is ridiculous. So I think it is thinking about being smarter, um, but it is also working harder. So it's making the brands and, you know, using technology as an enabler to free up some team time actually, so that they've got more time to engage on a personal level with a guest, which helps to create kind of that better connection and emotive sense of kind of sense of loyalty. Thank you. Well, that was such a thorough answer that we used up the Sorry. last of our <laughs> we used up the last of our time. But um, everybody will be here afterwards. So if you did have another question, please do just come over and find us, and I'm sure I'm sure we'll be able to answer your question um, then. So thank you so much, Nick, Mustafa, and Holly. Thank you. Thank you.